YouTube and welcome back to all my Uncommon Sense fam and clan. If you're new to the channel, we talk about all things fragrance, fashion, beauty, style, mental health, and well-being. So if you're into that type of content, you're gonna wanna stick around because we got a lot of great stuff coming up on this channel. Today's video is one about Roofless Fragrances. My main lady, Ruth, hit me up and was like, I want you to be a part of this Roofless Fragrance tag. In the video, we're gonna talk about our Roofless Fragrances, fragrances that are outgoing and outstanding. I enjoy it, but everybody around me can smell it and enjoy it as well. So, if you're into that type of content, stay seated. I want you to make sure you do all three. You wanna like, comment, and subscribe. We about to get into that tag. Every single day, I did a little switching up on my surroundings. If you guys are feeling the way the location and the setup is looking, you feeling the vibe of what I got going on behind me, let me know in the comments below. This is one of the various areas where I keep my fragrances in addition to this closet behind me where all of my fragrances are stored across this whole shelf. Like basically from here all the way to here, keeping my fragrances in a cool, dark place and in their boxes. We're gonna hop right into one of my ruthless fragrances. My skin usually tends to eat up fragrances, but this one lasts and it projects. You wanna know what fragrance that is? Are you Guam Grown? This is said to be a clone of Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather. Dope presentation, dope box. Child don't care about the box. That's just me. Fruity leather. So it's raspberry, leather, olivine. This one lasts me roughly about 15 or so hours. And it depends just on what activity I'm doing. Ruthless. It plays no games. And for a person like me, who my skin metabolizes fragrances very quickly, typically wear this in the fall slash winter, partially because that's the only time I want to smell like leather. Because <laughs> it's cooler here in Chicago. So those are the times that remind me of a leather jacket, wanting to smell Bad act on me. I do what I want when I want. I could possibly bust this out on a cooler day in the spring or summertime. However, I'm less apt to do so. But you do what's best for you, because I'm gonna do me. And I'm gonna support you in doing you. So if you guys have not tried this one, this is Versace Light Your Pomper On. What can I say? It ain't gonna play with your ass. No cat. Well, cat. But I'm not cat. You get that idea. So if you like fragrances that last, project, Versace Light Your Pomper On. My next ruthless fragrance is Moschino's I Love Love. Moschino is one of my more favorite designer houses, partially because they make fragrances that just truly speak to me and that are made for me, my skin type, how I live, how I get down, my design aesthetic. I Love Love is typically marketed toward women. Even though they don't exclusively say that, you can just kind of tell this is probably marketed toward women. Kind of has that olive oil from Popeye type of feel because I believe they were basing the bottles and the likenesses on the characters from Seagar at that moment. Seagar was the animation company behind Popeye, Bluto. Just a little history lesson there. If you didn't know about that, you're welcome. I Love Love is gonna be more spring and it puts me in the mind of Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue Parfum. I love this fragrance. It's, of course, at a much cheaper price than Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Parfum, but it has that citrus note very fresh, musk, and this one really lasts and projects on my skin. I cheaply wear this in spring slash summertime, partially because this fragrance would not be able to stand up to the cold. Fresh, bright, airy, and it lasts on my skin as well as projects. Those around me get a chance to smell it. Without being offended, it makes a statement and it makes itself known. Talk about presents, I love love. This is my second bottle of this one, so as you can see, nice little dent in there. Next up, we have Azaro Wanted. It don't play no games. This is like the barrel of a gun, you know what I mean? It's loaded. Let's get a little spritz. Two. Yes. Very fresh. Kind of aquatic, sweet, amory. Mmm. Kind of bubble gummy as well. So, you know, it's one of those bubble gum sweet types of fragrances, but I really enjoy it and I really feel like it 
fits me. It's roofless. Lasts on me roughly about 10-ish hours as well. It projects as well as lasts. A lot of people compare this to Papa Robbins Invictus. Yeah, I guess I can see that with the sweetness of it. For me to me, is a better fit for me and my skin. Partially because it's not cloying on my skin. Cocked and loaded and ready to shoot, you know what I'm saying? So this is a fragrance I really, really enjoy for spring slash summer because I can wear it any time of the year and be totally fine. But for me, spring is a time where I like to see this one come alive. So again, we got Azaro's Wanted, EDT. Next up, Mancera's Black Line. You knew this list was not gonna be complete without a Mancera in the mix. Let's get a spritz of this one. You know that atomizer, it's just so direct. We have the signature rose oob combo in this fragrance, but the woody fruitiness of this one, the dry down is where this one truly becomes magical. This is a fragrance that performs as well as projects. So it sits on my skin and lasts for about eight to 10 hours, moderate amount of sprays, maybe about five to 10 across the body, mostly chest, fit of the elbows, back of the neck, etc. That's how I roll. On my skin, it's rose, oud, musk, and a little bit of fruitiness. This one reminds me of rose, oud, and musk with a hinted added woody fruitiness that I really enjoy. For the price, for the quality of fragrance, I could not not feature this one. Partially because I'm from one single house, I own the most from Mancera. Clearly, they're doing something right to catch my attention to give me to be a repeat customer. If you guys have not given this one a try, it's Mancera's Black Wine. It reminds me somewhat of Mancera's Pink Prestigium, but the Pink Prestigium is a lot more grapefruit forward and more musky. And this one is just a little bit more toned down and a little bit more woody, which again, I enjoy this one. This one would typically be worn early spring, winter, fall. But again, it dep just depends on how I'm feeling because I can rock this whenever I feel like it. It's a good spot. I don't want to get it on clothes because it ain't never come out. <laughs> yeah, the opening, again, the opening leaves a little bit to be desired because it's very pungent and strong, but it quickly transforms you. You get that Rosu combo. Musk in there. I get a little, small hint of leather, and then those woody fruits, the woody fruitiness comes out later. So, Mancera, black line. Last but not least, another Rosasi. This is Rosasi's La Yaquam Jasmine Wisp. This one is typically marketed toward women. However, this is a fragrance that I own and wear and will recommend to anybody. Gentlemen who like fragrances that are fresh, floral, and sweet, and have an amazing longevity, Jasmine Wisp. As you probably can tell from the title, again, dope presentation, magnetic, wooden box, sturdy cap, the La Yaquam for own is not that sturdy of a cap. I don't know if it's just because I've taken it off and on too many times and now it's loosening up, but this one you can hold by the cap. I don't recommend it, but you can. La Yaquam Jasmine Wisp, as you can probably tell from the naming convention, Jasmine is one of the more prominent notes here. Ugh, so good. This fragrance puts me in the mind of fragrances like Tiziana Terenze's Kirke. It puts me in the mind of Herba Pura. Puts me in the mind of Jardin Exclusif. Those types of fragrances where they are very floral, sweet, fresh, and fruity. This one, however, has an amazing longevity to me on me. I'm not gonna recommend you nothing I don't wear, but this one, I'm gonna cake for. I found out about this one from Lulu. I smelled it on her channel. This was probably like one of my favorite ones she had in her collection. And I had to buy my own because I like it just that much. This is another fragrance that is ruthless. So I'm talking about sillage and I'm talking about projection and I'm talking about uh, performance. This is one of the heavy hitters in my category. This is one of the heavy hitters in my collection. Plays no games. If it gets on clothes, it's over with. You're just gonna be smelling like that for however long it takes for you to wash that out. A bouquet of fruit, musk, beautiful white florals, jasmine. This one here is a beauty. I would opt to wear this more warmer temperatures. 
coming into spring slash summer, late fall, this is what I'm gonna be rocking. These are the fragrances that I'm gonna wanna be when the world opens back up and we can get back to normal, quote unquote. These are the fragrances that I'm gonna wanna wear to be outside because it radiates. You're not gonna be able to ignore this one. When you smell it, you'll be like, damn, that smell good. And no matter who it's on, mm, one of my love. And this has been my Ruthless Fragrance Tag. Shout out to Ruth's Gifted Hands for including me in this fragrance tag. I appreciate you, sis. It's been your man, Uncommon Sense. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart, the top of the sides, and then I'm gonna lift it up and love on you from underneath. We out. Till next time, y'all. All right.